What's up y'all, Sparty here. For this video, I want to talk Sony Xperia 1 Mark III, and I want to talk more specifically about the 4K display and whether, whether or not I overall think it's worth it for overall daily use, content consumption, things like that, gaming, and whatnot. I want to, oh, I just want to overall give my thoughts about how well or how bad this display does in certain areas. And I'm sorry, I'm drinking a lot of pop, <laughs> so I've been burping a lot. But um, I'm going to just say this right now. When or if you get this phone or even like a One Mark II, which also has a 4K display, the only difference between the One Mark II and Three is that this has a 4K 120 hertz display. So that's even more power draw. But you got to <laughs> you got to keep in mind that if you're going to have a 4K display on a phone, you're going to have to expect you're going to just going to have to expect lesser battery life than phones that uh, that don't have a 4K display. And from what I've seen from people that have had a One Mark II and that have <clears throat> had other devices, like other Snapdragon 888 devices that have a quad HD display and whatnot, but also have 120 hertz, they tend to say that the One Mark II in particular tends to last as long as other phones on the market that came out at the time. So the 4K wasn't really a power draw. It was probably just more the battery size itself. This is also going up from a 4,000 to a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. So that's pretty a pretty substantial leap going from 1 Mark II to 1 Mark III. But you also got to keep in mind, Snapdragon 888, that's going to be a power draw and heat monster. The 4K... 120 hertz display, which you can turn off. You can turn off the, you can turn off the 120 hertz. Just put it down to 60 for like overall usage. And if you want to use the 120 hertz for something like gaming, you can do that. You just have to do it in the game enhancer. <clears throat> um, you can also make it go up to 240 hertz <laughs> with a black frame insertion, which is very nice and it feels very smooth with a lot of games. So that's very nice, but. Let's get into how I feel about the overall display. Um, other things you're going to have to worry about is overall screen brightness. Due to the fact that you're getting <laughs> more pixels that are being pushed throughout the screen as compared to something like a Galaxy S21 Ultra, you're going to be, you're going to notice that you're not going to get as bright of a display. Now it's not terrible. I don't, I don't think that this phone has a horrendous amount of screen brightness or anything like that. And it does get pretty, it gets bright enough for me personally in bright sunlight, but ultimately depending on how much sun is in your area and how bright it ends up being throughout the day, it may be a deal breaker for you. And I would probably advise you to go to other phones, <laughs> but, but overall, I don't have any problems with the screen brightness. I do feel like it's fine and really no issues there whatsoever um the 4k is very nice though i will say that is it worth it overall it's going to be ultimately up to the person that ends up getting the phone for me personally i do feel like it is a very nice addition i personally feel it's worth it for content that can indeed like, say if you put local 4K files onto the phone, like movies onto the phone and whatnot, those look fantastic. But if you are going to like Google TV or any of these other streaming services, you're not really going to get the full benefit because at the end of the day, you're still streaming it. So there's going to be some artifacting still. There's going to be some issues when it comes to that. But I do feel like there's an ever so slight um, advantage with certain with certain content going up to 4K with depending on who depending on the camera that a content creator uses like if they use a Sony camera it does come become quite evident because there's like very little there's like no artifacting it basically gets removed and when i compare it to another phone that doesn't have a Sony display you can see the artifacting very much and it's something that it's, it, it kind of gets into this kind of weird, um, 
what would I say? This way, this, it kind of makes the phone feel more premium because you're getting more bang for your buck out of things like that. Now, obviously not everyone uses a Sony camera. You're going to tell, you're going to be able to tell, but I do feel like it, the phone's display does a very good job at making sure, especially on YouTube where artifacting is pretty prevalent because it's just how the compression works on YouTube. Um, you'll be able to tell when someone is using a uh, Sony camera in particular, because you just won't see any artifacting. Um, when I play 4K movies that are local, say like Mad Max, Fury Road, um, other, I forget what other 4K movies I have, but that movie in particular, and I compared it on my Google TV, Google TV version, which is, which got 4K up res like a few years ago after the fact that it came out. It, um, it's night and day. Like there's really nothing I would say, like, <laughs> It's just, man, it's crazy how much more detail you can see, even on this small 4K display compared to like a super big, like 50 inch 4K TV or something like that. Um, and I do feel like with things like wallpapers, I do tend to get four to 8K wallpapers. They look very clean on this display too. And Compared to what I was seeing on something like a Galaxy S21 Ultra, which I would still put 4K wallpapers on, <laughs> there was a little bit, pixels seemed a little bit more bunched up, but now, well, but now it's just clean. And I really do like that a lot. It ultimately depends on, like, if it's a 3D render, like this wallpaper right here, um, there would be some issues <laughs> on the S21 Ultra. But if it's like a drawing or a painting or something like that, it won't matter all that much. Either <laughs> whether you put a 4K like drawing on a 1080p display, 2K, 4K, you'll get just as much. It'll look just as good and you don't really have to worry. But a lot of people don't like to use actual wallpapers. They like to have a black background, which I don't get because it doesn't really. People say, oh, it saves battery life. It doesn't really save that much battery life, if any. Like, I th I'm starting to see that as kind of a myth these days, because how long do you just keep your phone on its home screen anyway, right? Hardly ever. So why does it matter how much battery you're saving with the black background on the home screen if you're barely using it anyway? Um, but yeah, even like looking at text, looking at a lot of different things, <laughs> like... It makes certain experiences just feel far more crisp, and I really do appreciate that a lot. Um, your mileage may vary. I'd probably advise you if you don't want to go full on a Xperia 1 Mark III to get a 1 Mark II or a Xperia 1 and see how much you like that. And I really do feel like Sony does a very good job with their OLED, too. It's honestly kind of a really great display. It's probably my favorite display on the phone right now. And that's high praise, despite its faults of not being the brightest out there. Battery draw being kind of an, <laughs> being something you're going to have to deal with. But due to the fact that this phone also has pretty damn fast charging, you don't really have to worry about that either at 30 watts. So I do feel like the phone <laughs> does a very good job with battery management. I tend to get like... <sighs> seven and a half hours of screen on time if I'm just watching YouTube and stuff like that. Um, there's a little bit more issues now since it's colder outside and this phone doesn't have like mil standard A10G like my LG phones did where it does have that weather resistance as well. So it's not the greatest when being outside and the battery gets a little bit iffy, but honestly, I can deal with it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, using the, using the phone day to day and just doing regular stuff, the phone doesn't get hot, like while you're using the display. There are some phones that do do that. That's why I'm bringing that, that do that. That's why I'm bringing that up. Like the S21 Ultra and the S20 FE, like specific, depending on the update, would either be super hot or it would be totally fine. By the end of my run with the S21 Ultra, and honestly, it would get pretty warm 
but it wasn't to the point where I would say it was a deal breaker. This phone doesn't really do that for me. And I really do appreciate that a lot. Um, that's all I really got to say for this, though. I do feel like the 4K is a very well added feature, especially if you're doing something like recording a lot of 4K video. It definitely does make a difference. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's all I got to say for this. This is Sparta. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for support. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. Whatever time of day it is in the area, like the video. If you like it, share with people that are interested in this sort of content and have a good one.